Welcome back, nerd friends. Thanks for tuning in. Let's talk about soldering. Table full of tools, and let's talk about a little bit about what each part of my soldering kit does, I guess. Big important one is a surface to work on. A lot of times I solder on my workbench, I solder on top of my RC cars. I've even soldered on top of battery packs before just because it held the plug in place. But in an, an ideal situation, you want to have a block of wood so that when you're soldering on stuff, the solder that falls off, splashes, whatever the case may be, hits the wood and doesn't melt your bench. Next thing I like is to have at least a piece of foam to work on top of. You can save these from various boxes and whatnot. For holding wires and holding plugs, that's always tricky. You need a buddy to either hold the plug or holding it with one, like I do this number or I hold it with one and then I solder the wire in. But one thing that is pro tip, the vice grips can be used to hold on to the plugs themselves very securely and that way you can work with that stuff on a flat surface if you have to install plugs on a speed control that's in a car this is great because you can crank this guy down set that somewhere in the car where it reaches your your motors or your speed control wire and solder it into place pretty easily so vice grips and then the bench top one that I like a lot is a little tiny clamp. You can use this to hold on to speed controls while you're soldering onto them or hold on to your plugs as well, of course. So those some simple makes your life easier on the bench items. Two very important tools in your arsenal should be a set of wire only flush cutters that you only use for cutting your electric wires in your RC cars and a pair of nice wire strippers. Strippers are maybe one of the more important parts of your soldering kit so that you don't incorrectly cut and strip the wires to tin them. What will happen is if you take your scissors and you, you cut along the edge, you'll end up with a bunch of broken wires along the edge. And then when you tin that wire, it'll make those pop up. And when you solder stuff together, those can go everywhere. So a proper set of strippers that are the correct size for the wires that you're working with. I tend to always try to strip one size up first so they have no chance of getting down to the wire and cutting it and I just kind of break the surface of the insulation and peel it back that way. You never use your flush cutters on screws and other stuff. It really does cut the wire much, much nicer. So. so now let's talk about plug positioning and whatnot. I run into some situations where the wire floats in the solder. If you either put too much solder to tin your wire or if you put too much solder on your plug surface, you'll end up with a layer of solder between the surface and the wire and that's bad solder is a bad conductor so you want to try to make sure that when you tin surfaces it's it's a pretty light amount obviously you have to put a layer of solder onto everything but as you apply heat and roll these down you push the wire into the surface so that it's not floating in the solder so make sure that when you're soldering wires to either connectors or the bullets on your speed controls that the wire is not sitting in a bubble of solder and it actually touches the surface and while this one maybe doesn't have so much to do with soldering it, it is in the same ballpark because of this you're going to have to solder a lot more I get a lot of tech calls, emails for shutdowns, and folks are telling me that they're using Dean's plugs, Traxxas plugs, EC plugs is the one that I run into. And the EC plugs I'm not a fan of because of the way the wire goes into the tube, and the it's hard to get the wire to touch kind of the either side of the edge of the tube. So you'll end up with a piece of wire floating in solder kind of no matter what you do. So I try to steer away from those. I'm a big fan of the AMAS brand of XT series plugs, XT60s, XT90s. They do bigger ones, XT150s and stuff like that. And it just makes it real easy to get the wire on the surface and the connectors are bigger than the wires while still being a nice compact um, plug. If the wire ends up being bigger than the surface of the connector, that's going to be a weak spot in overheat. And I can appreciate more than anyone else that folks have been using Dean's plugs and Traxxas plugs and whatever for years and years and years, and they don't have problems until they do some upgrades or make some changes. You got to take a look at your plugs. I, I talk to folks every day for pretty long periods of time about their plugs, so something to keep in mind. And finally, the, the good equipment is a key. When you're soldering, the, one of the more important things is the soldering iron that you use. The, I have this great travel iron. 1UP Racing does this, and it, it runs off a 6S LiPo, and it gets up to 850 degrees. Otherwise, when I'm at home, I use my handy-dandy Haku station with the normal uh, full-size handle. These guys both have what I'll call a, a chisel style of tip that's pretty big. And the reason is, is I do a lot of big wire soldering. You can get away with smaller tips in this for stuff, but this is 
you know, you can, I, I like the chisel tip because you can use the edge and then you have a very small side of it and then you got the big huge side of it as well for the big wires. And this guy kind of works the same. It's got that thin tip while it's got the big flat surface as well. You want to run your irons probably somewhere around 700 to 800 degrees Fahrenheit for most situations, sometimes lower if you're doing a lot of small stuff. And you got to keep an eye on your solder because if you hit your solder to the tip and it, it does that burst, if you will, the solder balls go everywhere and that's all bad. So you want to run the iron a little lower. You want to have a sponge too. Make sure you have either a wet towel or a moist sponge. This helps clean the tip constantly. You want to make sure that the tip of the iron is constantly being cleaned before you touch surfaces. And then next up is the solder. Most of the so solder that you find today is going to be lead-free solder, which isn't super easy to work with. And it's for Mother Nature, lead going into the earth, landfills, recycling, electronics, all that. So they've been going to lead-free solder, and I'm fortunate that I have this huge roll that my local hobby shop was able to find for me. Shout out to Jake's Performance Hobbies that had leaded solder still. So it's a 60-40 uh, lead tin solder with a rosin core, so it's got kind of flux in, in the solder already. If you get stuck with the leaded solder, that's fine. Just make sure you get yourself a little bit of flux. It'll make your life a whole lot easier, either a, a liquid flux or a flux paste, and make sure it's not an acid flux. It's a rosin flux. That's what they use in Acid flux is what you use for plumbing and stuff like that. And if you do a lot of reworking of speed controls and cleaning stuff up, solder wick is one of your best friends. It's basically this copper braided stuff that you'll apply heat to it and it'll pull some of the solder off the surfaces. So you'll be able to clean out your uh, solder holes and stuff like that real easy. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please do send us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. See you next time.